What's up everybody, Liv here. Welcome back to the channel and thank you guys for watching. So I really appreciate those who have just joined me on this journey. And if you're new here, welcome. And thank you for those who have come along the five or six years or so I've been on YouTube. So thank you so much, I appreciate you guys. All right, so if I sound really stuffy or I sound different or you hear me out of breath or sniffing, it's because I'm getting over a cold and my allergies have kicked in. So I'm fighting two different things here, but um, please be patient with me. All right, so we're gonna get into the Swamp Fox Kraken, but before we do, Optics Planet, thank you for sending this over. You guys know that I've been with Optics Planet for a minute now. Um, if you need anything in the 2A realm, ammo, targets, parts, accessories, optics, go visit their website, opticsplanet.com, and you can get 5% off your order by using my code 32ICON, all right? So, Optics Planet, thank you for sending this over. This is the optic right here. We're gonna get into some specifications, and then we're going to get into my experience as well as pros and cons, okay? So, this firearm is unloaded. Also, this is the SIG P320 X Compact Spectre, all right? That's kind of a mouthful, but that's what I'm using uh, for this video, and that's what I use to um, sample this optic. All right, we're going to get into some specifications, and then we're going to go from there. All right, so the Swamp Fox Kraken is a closed emitter optic. It's a 70-75 aluminum housing, and it weighs 2.4 ounces. It's super tough and durable. The optic comes with an RMR and Glock MOS plate. It also hosts a CR2032 battery with shake and awake technology. The optic will go off after about four minutes of non-use. It has a three MOA green dot, although they do come in red, and it's in half MOA per click, which is audible and tactile. It can be used on a PCC, a pistol, shotgun, or a rifle. It has 10 brightness settings, two of which are night vision, and it comes with a 50,000 round guarantee. So if you break it, Swamp Fox will replace it. All right, so let's get into some of my experiences as well as some pros and cons. So overall, I had a great experience with this optic. For starters, it comes with the two plates, the RMR and it comes with the Glock MOS. So the plates look like this. All right, this is the MOS plate right here. There we go. Okay, and I have the RMR plate on here. So that's the, the plate that's on here, okay? Next, the glass for the most part is clear. I mean, again, this firearm is empty, but the glass for the most part is very clear, okay? I do like that it's very durable. I like that the buttons and the battery is easily accessible. So for instance, the buttons to actuate your brightness is simple, up and down. Very simple and very tactile, okay? The overall, I guess, design of the optic is simple. I mean, people don't like the big mailbox on top of the slide. And in hindsight, I probably would go with a longer slide to test this out. But nonetheless, um, it does look pretty cool, all right? That's the top of it. If you see, um, you can see, you see the Swamp Fox design there, okay? The logo, for the most part, all right? The battery is on the outside, so it's easy to actuate. It's easy to unscrew it, put a new battery in, and screw it back in, okay? You have your... Uh, windage and elevation which is easy to get to and it's not too much going on so I really do like that about this optic next one of the things that I noticed when I was shooting it was when I look through the optic okay it's very clear but when I look through the optic it has um, like s different layers like this very tunnel vision Okay, but it has like a bunch of layers and through some more research, I realized that it's like, a, it's like the closing emitter and then it's like, there's a, there's a housing around that. There's another housing around the housing and then there's like another housing around the housing that's around the housing, which sounds really weird. But basically what Swamp Fox is saying is that 
It's very durable and it's going to hold up to a lot of beading. And you can see the layers inside the optic, which is hard to show on camera, but you can see it. And it's just, it just gives that, um, it gives you that reassurance that this is going to last a long time. So I do like that. And basically, let's say you have to manipulate this optic off of a barrier of some sort. If that glass cracks, the outer layer of the glass will crack, but you will still be able to use the optic because there's another layer. It's like a double pane glass almost, if I'm not mistaken. But I noticed it when I was shooting and then I did some more research. I was like, this is something's different about this optic. And um, through my research, that's when I realized that that's how they built it. So very um, advanced in their technology. The ingenuity is there. I really like that about um, Swamp Box. So, Again, you guys can do your, uh, more research on that, but um, it's given durable, okay? And I don't bang and test and throw my optics. There are other channels that do that. Um, I'm just regular conceal carry, go to the range, use it, and I can give you a perspective based on that type of usage. But I'm not going to bang and throw and <laughs> hammer down and all that. I don't do that on my optics. All right. One of the other things too, a lot of people like to know, will it co-witness? It will not co-witness with your iron sights um, because the optic sits so high. And that's kind of part of one of my cons that I'll get to is that with the plate, as you can see, with the plate, you see like, it's kind of like, um, like a 19, 13 pick rail here, kind of sort of. And that's because the optic has to clink down on that. All right, because it's a closed emitter, so there's nowhere to go inside and screw this down. You have to like um, put your optic on top of this, right? Then you screw it down, and then when you put this on top of the slide, the optic um, grabs onto here. It's kind of, it's hard to explain, but it's an easy process. Listen, if I could do it, you can do it. It's super simple on a scale of one to five with five being most difficult, one being super duper easy, it's a one, okay? You just put it on there. But I wish that the plate was thinner, okay? Because when you put the plate on and then you sit the optic on top of it, look how higher it sits. Whereas if you had a thinner plate, it will sit lower and you might be able to co-witness your sights. I don't really care for co-witness. I like a lower one third, but a lot of people like to co-witness. So that's important for them. But if I had to say that probably was a con for me. Um, what else? I talked about the controls being simple. I talked about you being able to look through. It's very clear, very easy to pick up on that um, green dot. And when I have this at the highest, brightest setting, it doesn't give me that bloom or that starburst like some other optics. Even at the highest, when I was at the range, it it was fine. Like it, it's bright. Like I turned it down, it's bright, but it wasn't blooming. I didn't feel like um, there was a starburst effect. None of that. So that was great with the optic. Um, when I'm looking through this optic, this is kind of a. I don't know if it's a negative, but the window is very small. Okay, um, very difficult to tell on camera but the window is super small. It's almost like you're going through a tunnel and you have tunnel vision and you're just looking at that target that you're shooting, target, um, plate, whatever it is that you're shooting is very narrow. So you have to be focused when you're looking through it. You can't be looking through this then trying to look at your target, look through this, trying to look at your target. You have to be really focused on it. So is it a negative? In a sense, because it's just so narrow, like there's no, you you just right there. Um, but it's not, it's not bad. That's the thing. Like it, it gets you to focus on whatever it is you're shooting. I just noticed it with this optic more so than I noticed it with any other closed emitter optic that I shot. And I shot the Steiner NPS. I shot, I shot the um, Holosyn 509T. And I noticed it on this more than any of the other optics. It's very tunnel vision. So I guess that's a good thing. So um, I don't want this video to be too long, but 
I liked it. I felt that it was durable for my use. Um, easy to control, easy to actuate, easy on the eyes, okay? I like that it's super protected with those layers of glass and the layers of housing. It just makes me feel comfortable if I was carrying this for duty or if I had it, you know, in the home or what have you. I mean, yes, I'm taking it to the range, so I'm not going to beat up on it all that much. But if I was using this for duty and definitely self-protection, um, I would really like this. As far as carrying it, I did not carry, but closed emitters are like mini mailboxes <laughs> on top of your slide. So it's going to stick out a little bit. I don't know if you hip carry or appendix carry, but it's going to stick out just a little bit more than the traditional um, optics that are open, that don't have the closed emitter. All right. Um, what else? Did I miss anything? Uh, controls are very simple. Um, at Optics Planet right now, the red dot is going for $2.98, but the green dot is going to be a little bit more, so I surmise maybe like $20 more, something like that. But um, if I were you, I would check it out. Usually, Optics Planet has um, the most deals, um, but you can search around. Again, you use my code, you get 5% off. All right, so... Outside of that, you guys let me know. I've I've tested about three of these closed emitters uh, so far, and I like them. They're unique. They're different. They're easy to use. They're durable. Um, they're target focused, so you're not looking at other stuff uh, when you should be looking at your target. Battery life, for the most part, seems to be decent, right? But you have to decide whether you like the, tr the traditional open emitter at the end or if you like the closed emitter. Optics now are starting to run in that, <laughs> those closed emitters are starting to run in the three, dollars $400 range. Okay, if you get a nice optic, even if it's not closed emitter, you're still kind of looking around the same price w once you start, you know, going around researching, trying to get the best deals. So you have to decide what is best for you. If you're not really carrying for duty, you're not really going hard like that, you may not need a closed emitter optic. You might just go with a traditional optic and knock a few bucks off, right? But if you want something that's more adorable, something that's going to handle, um, that's going to stand the test of time, you might want to start looking at the closed emitter. And listen, you can use this on a shotgun, PCC, rifle. It doesn't have to be on a pistol. So you may not like the way it looks on the pistol, then put it on another firearm, okay? So that's it and that's all. You guys let me know what you think about this. I'm kind of <laughs> kind of worn out on the closed emitter optics at this point. I'm tired of doing videos on these, but I do like when they come across my desk because it gives me an option to look at something else and see what the market is doing as well as the competition. All right, I love the ingenuity. I love the fact that companies are still pushing and trying to create um, new and improved uh, products for the consumers. So I do like that part, all right? So anyway, you guys let me know. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're doing well. Treat one another with kindness and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, peace.